turn the sound on and he's live he's live <laughs> hey how's everyone doing my name is Kurt I'm a dad who draws and this is our Monday afternoon live draw uh, we're gonna be drawing this awesome looking garden um, garden fence not a garden fence it's a it's a garden in the middle of Ireland. I, you know, what was the name of this? Uh, this garden gate. Well, you know, I don't remember off the top of my head, but if you want to learn how to draw a uh, stoned enclosed garden, this is the place to be, right? <laughs> in Ireland, there's, you know, I put the description, it's in the description. So um, maybe one day we'll have to visit. How is everyone doing today? I see uh, John is here. <laughs> Danielle, Darlene, we've got the whole crew in. So uh, I am really happy that everyone is on board and we are going to do some drawing today. So let me uh, let me take a look. Let me show you something here. Uh, if you don't mind, before you leave or before the hour's up, at some point, please do do all that good stuff of commenting and <clears throat> giving a thumbs up. You know, it does help me. We got to keep this thing growing. Hello, Sharon, how are you? Okay, so in this picture, this picture um, is actually, uh, let me talk about scrap or using reference material. Because sometimes, sometimes as a new artist or, or if, uh, you know, whatever level you are, sometimes you think using scrap is cheating. Well, it's further from the truth. Most, most if not, I would very easily say, 90% of all artists use scrap because our brains are only so limited that we can remember only few things. And when you are looking at scrap or, or reference, it's going to help you remember the details. Okay, so let me show you what two pictures I put together here in order to get this. Uh, so this, this was a, uh, I, I don't think they're at the same place, but this, this picture here on the right is the actual picture. This one right there, okay? And uh, I thought I wanted to add a little bit more foreground and add a little bit mystery. Plus there weren't as many flowers, uh, flowers in this one that were up close. So I took this one and essentially just removed, let me get this here. I removed this whole section here and then push these walls out just a little bit to reveal the picture we're gonna to draw tonight. And here it is, draw today. So as you can see then, um, by combining these two photos, I've created a whole bunch of this, this wall that is in the foreground and you are looking through it. So it creates depth and a lot more interest. One more thing I did to it to really make it come close to me was I darkened it. And you have to remember that your eye loves light. Your eye will always be drawn to whatever is light first. So uh, the lightest point, of course, is beyond that second gate. And that is why I darkened this first layer so much because I didn't want it to be a distraction. I wanted it to be a second player in in our whole uh in our whole drawing here so i just wanted to show you that that you know a lot of times it's really okay to take different images and put them together to create something that is super original and super unique all right so let us let me get to a blank slate here right i'll get rid of this guy here get rid of this guy and move him up to the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. First thing I first thing we're going to do is I always like to draw some type of border. The border is going to help me to uh, help me with some of my proportion. Okay, so and if you ever are working like on a painting or something like that, you could use the same same idea. I'm not a big fan of like gritting things out, except in the case if you were drawing, if you were going to 
paint a giant mural on the side of a building. I can't imagine. Gridding has got to be the only way to do it out. But when we're working small like this, it's to your advantage that if you can get away from using the grid so much, um, you won't rely on it as much anymore. Plus, it will slow you down. This way, this way I do use vertical and horizontal lines to get my proportion, but I'm putting them in as needed. Uh, and I'm using my mind to put them in as opposed to actually gritting something out. So it's just some, just some thoughts uh, to uh, think about. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna start down here and I'm gonna just get this nice, nice frame up here. And so let's just, I'm just gonna come up here and you know, I'm, I'm holding my pencil toward the back and I use my pinky to drag it. I'll drag my pencil along the paper or in this case, along the glass of my iPad. And this will help keep a line nice and straight. Plus the other thing is, is I tr when I'm drawing straight lines, I'm always trying to draw from my elbow and my shoulder, okay? Not from my wrist. All right, let's get the other side there and same. We're gonna come up, okay. And then we could just kind of look, look for this opening here, right? gonna adjust mine so it's a little bit a little bit more open all right that looks pretty good that's a good starting point <clears throat> okay time to uh, let's kind of put in the tip the very top uh, what I'm looking at here, let me show you. Right here, this 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 is the shape I'm looking in, and if you notice, it's it's slightly, uh, it's not parallel. It's going it's going back in into perspective ever so slightly. Okay, so let's get that in place, and it's going to be right about here, I think. All right. All right, and this is going to go all the way to the edge. Make sure you make sure you draw that so it's off center. <clears throat> Another thing I'm using, you know, we we've I've discussed many times uh, about the tools of measurement. These are the things that you use in order to. Uh, get your proper uh, proportion right. So I use, I use horizontal lines and vertical lines. I also use negative space. So look at this, here's a shape, here's a negative, here's a negative space here, look at this. Right there, you see that? So I would, I would look at my drawing and try and match that negative shape. So it's going to come down a little bit. And then it's going to come in like this, you see? Okay, let's kind of estimate where the top of this arch is going to be. Let's get this let's get this right side first, okay? So there's There's my wall, and then, and then this right there. Look at this. Top of that bush is right there, and if I go out to the edge, I can see it's like that. That's the distance. Where is the halfway point here? It's about, it's about right there. Okay.
All right. So halfway is about there. <clears throat> Below that a little bit. All right. So there's there's the top of that of that bush. This is about where that red red dot is. Okay. So let's let's come up here and just rough in rough in this dome and I'm, I'm going to draw this is what I'm going to draw first I'm I'm looking to rough in this right there you see that that's what I'm that's what I'm going for right now and I'm as I'm doing that I'm I'm looking at this distance I'm kind of judging how what's the width of this judge of this distance from that wall to that right there okay and I can also look at the shape of the path down below now it's really important to get these Get these basic shapes in place. Oops, lost track of time. All right, that's all right, Pamela. You're here. I'll, I'll go a little bit slow here for the next 10 minutes. You could just quickly caught up, quickly get caught up. Okay, look at this. Look at the width there. You see that? And that, that's going to come in like that, almost like a J. So let's let's quickly put that, let's get that idea in as, as well. And then... <clears throat> Next thing I want to be aware of, look at this now. Let's change the color here so you can see it. Look at this negative shape. Look at the opening here. You see this? That's a great negative shape. Let's try and let's try and match that shape. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and tone that in so you could see it so we want to match that drawing wise just keep it light so if you if you look at it mine you could already see that I'm a little I think this needs to be a little bit taller here Okay. All right, there's the let's draw that bush here. That bush is going to come down a little bit lower like that. What we're doing right now is just getting a rough outline. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to get rid of this here. Let's continue. Look, there's this, there's some bushes over here. And then this looks like it comes down there. OK, 
Okay, so now there's a there's a gate that's going across the uh, there's a gate that's going across the dome here. Look at this. It's like this. Of course, it, the other gate is coming in here. I'm just, it, it's wider than the opening. So all I'm doing right now is just trying to get shapes in. Okay, so this is going to be my the opening there, and I could see that there's like a there's an edge here. So I'm going to just kind of come down. It's going to come straight down here. And of course, you just have all these bushes on this side we'll come back with more detail a little bit on that and on the right side i'm going to start adding these roses so all i'm, I'm not i'm just going to put circles right now to give me a bit of an idea where they're going to go I'm checking them against the wall there and where they're lining up with some of the others. a little dome here. And then these flowers, I'm just going to, I've been using this, this phrase, this containment line to give me an idea of kind of where, where they're coming in here. Hey Kathleen, good to see you. I don't see you. I see your your comment. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead in this. Uh, now that we've got this really rough uh, outline of where things are going, let's let's do a passive tone. The tone will help kind of give us something to work off of, and help separate some of these parts. Okay. So I'm just going to come along here. This is going to be the foreground. So Keep going here. Just a nice even tone. This of course is going to get a lot darker as we go on, but for right now, 
you just want an even tone along this whole, whole area here. And another thing I'm trying to make all my strokes, my pencil strokes to be the same angle. Okay, you could even use that same tone for the other stone archway here. And one other area, look at that. You could even use it down here in the shadow. So just when you add it to the, as a shadow, look closely at the shapes. Yeah, there you go. There's always hope for us, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's let's do one more tone here on the objects that are in the foreground before we start doing any more detail. And we're gonna take this one more level closer to us. When I say one more level closer to us, it's just by adding a dark value, it just makes it close, it makes it seem that it's closer to our eyes. All right, we'll see you later, Kathleen. Just trying to get my values, my, my the big values set in place here. start getting into a little more detail here now in the foreground okay <clears throat> you know when they say that you're painting it's all about edges well, drawing is similar as what are the edges? <clears throat> what are the edges and what are the values? So <clears throat> look at these leaves that are coming in there, a brighter value than the background. And then we're going to start getting into <clears throat> some of these flowers. So all I'm going to do right now is just outline. 
outline where these flowers are going. Outline the big shape. And then I want to go in dark value. I'm referring to my picture a little bit. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to go dark here. <clears throat> okay, so there's a little there's a little I just noticed there's a little perspective here. So let's let's use that to help add for depth. So let me show you where the perspective is. If you this mortar that mortar is going like in that direction there. And then this, this brick is going in that direction there. And I could safely assume that that one is probably going in that direction. So let's, let's go to our drawing here. And just kind of put in a guy, just something like that. And then we're going to come down here and go like that. And then up here, we'll do the same. So let's go halfway and just use your eye. So we're going to create a slight perspective grid. But I keep having these segments. Okay, I'm going to come down now and, and get this edge. It's, there's a slight difference in tone with that wall. Now I could come in here and Get some odd shapes for these stones. Looking at my guide to make sure they kind of are starting to fall in perspective. Some of these will be covered up by that ivy very shortly, but for right now,
Okay, so I'm going to start adding some of this ivy in, and I'm just going to outline it. And then add a little bit of a dark shadow underneath. putting in my darks where I see those dark shadows Right. There's some, looks like there's some grasses down here, right? Just trying to keep a, <clears throat> a variation, a variety. All right, John, we'll see you later, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I even like to add little like dots, maybe some surface lines to give a sense of texture of the stone. Let's, let's con I'm going to continue moving forward here. If I'm going too fast, someone just asked me to slow down. Or if you have a question, by all means, throw it out there. <clears throat> okay, when I, when I get to the, f there's like, I'm, I'm seeing these two hedges, one on the right and one on the left. So I'm going to start with this guy on the left, but notice, notice there's a little bit of value change when he gets closer here to the to the wall as opposed to the one that gets in the sunlight you see that and i'm just going to add some light surface lines to help tell a viewer that this is round And then I can see down here under the roots, it's very dark.
Okay, let's let's add another tone to this wall. We have to be careful that we don't go too dark. So sorry. So sorry, darling. Okay, let's come back in here and add a little more detail to our wall. I'm just kind of when I when and when I'm drawing lines, I'm like pushing down and I'm pulling up. This will give a sense of a a nice taper, a nice taper at the end of it. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And if you have to turn your page, by all means, like spin your, uh, if you have to spin your uh, sketch pad, then do it. Now there's there's bricks. Look at this. There's this. There is this slight tone difference. I gotta show you this. <clears throat> Look at this here to here. You see that? There's a slight tone difference between those two. So let's let's definitely get that in. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to go in and add another tone to this foreground here. How to out the door in the doorway. The door. You mean the, you mean the gate? We'll add the gate. We'll add the gate at the end. We'll add the gate here shortly. Okay. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> How are we going to do that? Hmm? I don't know yet. I got to think about that one because it's it's lighter in value compared to the rest. Of, yeah, put the door in. We'll get there. We'll, we'll uh, yeah, we're going to get that. Pamela, I don't know yet. <laughs> we're going to figure that out together, okay? Right now, I just want to get this foreground <laughs> looking sweet. All right, let's get some bricks in here. I hope you don't mind my honesty. So I'm just I'm just using like surface lines. No, you haven't missed it yet. I haven't put it in yet.
I'm going to keep adding some more textures of bricks here. All right, how about we work on these uh, flowers that are on this stone archway? So let's see. This is, I'm just going to draw this idea of called a containment line about where this foliage is going to fall first. Okay. And then I'm going to also add kind of the line where I see the shadows coming from this. So let's add those now. We always, we always go from large to small, large shape to small shapes. And then inside of this shadow, let's, let's drop some more tone here. Very careful <clears throat> where I'm putting this value here. My strokes are the strokes I'm making with this Apple pencil here are. Uh, just little cup shapes so it, it gives a sense you know like this this is all I'm doing give a sense of leaves and flowers a little <clears throat> post here makes for an interesting shape And then this bush here, look at this bush here. We can put some surface lines and then it kind of turns a corner back here. going to drop an overall value on it because look at this look what's happening here look look how bright this is right there that's like the bright brightness of the page compared to how dark how dark that is so I want to really uh, to emphasize that right there okay
Okay, let's make our way across the, the path here. And look at this. That, that path is dark, dark value. This shadow of the, sh the, sh the shape of the shadow here. Oops, that's a little too dark. And then there's just try and make these tones as even as possible, leaving little, little openings for light to pop through. I'm gonna race. <clears throat> I'm gonna race this down here. If if you have that line in there. I'm gonna work on this. Uh, I'm gonna move over and do these uh, roses here so again they're they're just kind of round but the ones on top are going to be lighter value than the ones underneath and then i'm just adding dark value for these weird shapes. Sometimes I'm amazed how quickly the time goes by. All right. <clears throat> now, Pamela, we're going to do this gate because that is exciting. So <clears throat> as I'm looking at this gate now, I have to make a decision because the gate is, uh, it's slightly lighter than the background, but I'm actually going to reverse it. Just, I'm going to draw it in with a dark line nobody will know except us but the viewer who sees this picture won't see my reference and it will be easier for me to uh, get the feel of it okay as opposed to trying to leave the white we might hit some white highlights when we're done so let's let's just put that square up the edges there And then it, 
looks like there's a there's some decorative piece on top there and then the bottom part looks like it's generally four pieces so let's let's just try and divide this section in half and then there's going to be a slight slight uh, perspective and then this top one is going to be also all right look there's looks like it's divided down the center and there's bars. So I'm just, in this case, because it's such a small space, I'm just using my wrist to get these lines and I'm not terribly worried about getting them all even dark. I don't want them that way. I want them to have a little bit of lighter value adding some small decorative little round pieces there and I'm going through the whole thing here and adding some other round little segments. So it looks like it's like some beautiful ironwork that someone did on it. Just lightly, lightly doing that. Give you I'm gonna give you a second to get caught up there I, I want to show I want to show you something before I before I draw it it's, okay Okay, look at this. Look at look at this opening here. Let me show you this now. This is this is where I want you to focus right now. Okay? I want you to focus in that area. But look at this. Look at the this ironwork comes short. Do you see that? You see it it comes short in there. So we definitely want to uh, we want to pull it in. So watch what I do on mine. So I'm just going to pull it in like that, you see? And then going to assume like this is probably the center right there it's off center because we're looking at it at a different angle so once again I'm gonna put some type of decorative ironwork Look at this. <clears throat> this edge, 
this this edge is really bothering me look at that it's bothering me because I have the same exact value um, so I get no sense of of what is what my guess my guess is in the picture is a little I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit more from the picture this this is probably picking up light where this side is not okay so let me erase that now so I'm gonna darken this over here because I want that I want that arch to pop out just a little bit And then I'm going to have to darken this a little bit over here. Okay. I'm going to come in here now and just add a little bit more definition to this cast shadow. And I'm when I'm I'm doing surface lines back and forth, okay? Now, let's, uh, as we come, we're actually very close to finishing this up here. And this is what I want you to do. And this, this is important. So at this point, you should, this should be almost pure white. All, all of, all in this area here. Let me show you. This, this should almost be all pure white right now. Also in this, okay? In your in your page let's use atmospheric perspective to our advantage here and what I mean by act we've talked about this but let me just repeat it if this is your first time atmosphere atmospheric perspective is objects that are in the environment that are further away from you are gonna appear lighter in value and that's because you have atmosphere between you and them so if you have a lot of water droplets between you and that and that object, it's going to be fainter because you're looking through water. Whereas an object that's up close to you isn't going to have as many uh, of those droplets, so it's going to be pretty dark. That's why these uh, this object in front of us, the the you know the outside here, this is pretty dark. So our picture, let's let's. Let's exaggerate our picture just a little bit, okay? So as we come in here with our trees, let's make sure that we keep them as light as possible. And I'm just going to add some light tones. just to add something back there. And the same thing here, I'm, I'm thinking of like, maybe like trees, you know, what, what does this look like back here? Keep it as light as possible, except maybe this planter here. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back in here. And just add some fine line.
maybe a couple branches. Just being careful that I don't want to go too uh, dark. <clears throat> All right, I think that's all I'm gonna do in that background there. I'm not gonna show much more definition. I'm gonna add some hanging branches here. And I think that's going to do it for us today. <laughs> I have kept you long over the hour. All right. With that being said, listen, thanks for tuning in today. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this has been our... Monday edition of of Monday of the Monday afternoon live. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Please give a thumbs up, hit that bell, subscribe to all that great stuff. <laughs> so you know every time I come on here and and show you a little maybe a little something to make your drawing better, right? My name's Kurt and I'm a dad who draws. Everyone have a great day, and I will see you in Facebook. Oh, by the way, if you are interested, we do have links down here in the description for our Facebook group. It's very robust. There's also a bunch of links for other videos along with uh, some classes that are available. Okay? Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.